Hello, Business Calculus students. What we're going to be doing today are finding some global maxes and mins. So in class, previously we found local maxes and mins. Now we're doing global, which means we have to find the absolute highest point and lowest point. All right, I'll tell you, to, to regardless of what interval we're going to be looking at, the first step is always the same. Find critical points. Let's take a derivative. Set it equal to zero. Let's see what we can do. We can clearly take out a three. Not factors. So we have two critical points, two and four. All right, for part A, we're looking at this interval. If I do this in interval notation, I'm focusing on the interval from zero to 4.5. And I want to point out something. Notice that we have endpoints on both sides. We've got an equal sign there, we've got an equal sign there. Got a bracket here, we've got a bracket here. When we have endpoints on both sides, it is really easy to find global maxes and mins. All you do is you evaluate your function at your endpoints, so that's at zero and at 4.5, and all critical points in the interval. So two and four are both in that interval. So we just figure out what our function is at those four points. I'm going to write down numbers. But you could easily check this yourself using a calculator or Wolfram Alpha or gosh darn paper and pencil. These are the four numbers I get. Now all you do is you look at the low number, ta-da, global min. You find the high number, which is right here, 22 is the biggest of the four numbers. That's your global max. So all I'm doing is I am looking at the absolute lowest number out of the four and the absolute highest number out of the four, and that gives me my global min and global max. Let's move to part B. Whoops, didn't want to erase all of that. Let's try that again. On part B, things are a little bit different. Oops, all right, that's fine. Stay there. Our interval that we're focusing on is the interval bracket 2 out to infinity. So notice we don't have an endpoint on the right hand side. So what you have to do in this case is you have to think about what your graph looks like. Well, let's see. I'm starting at 2. Let's draw one of our number lines like we do for the first derivative test. There's 4. And let's think about what's happening here. Let's choose a test number here f prime of 3. Well, if I stick 3 into this, let me see what's going to happen. I'm going to have 3 here. I'm going to have 1 here, 3 minus 2. I'm going to have negative 1 here. It's going to multiply to give me a negative number. So f prime of 3 is negative, so f is going to be decreasing. Well, on the other hand, if I choose a number like 5 over here to the right of 4, that'll be 3 times 3 times 1, that's positive. So f is going to be increasing. So if I graph this, what I expect to see, there's 4, there's 2, is my function is going to be decreasing, and then it's going to be increasing. Now notice how I drew it like that. It keeps on going up. Why did I do that? Well, this is a polynomial, and this polynomial basically behaves like x cubed, which means it's going to get really, really large as x gets large. So my graph is going to look like that. So I see that and I say, all right, I definitely have a lowest point. x equals 4 is a global min. But there is no highest point, so no global 